Welcome to Per Wagadop, Berkshire Maine Society's local cable access TV show. My name is John Peralt and I'm your host. And today we're going to be talking about volunteer activities at the Berkshire Humane Society. And my guest today is Terry Bazilian, our very own volunteer coordinator. Welcome, Terry. Thanks for having me. And you know, Terry, many times people think about the Berkshire Humane Society and volunteering and they assume that they can come and they can, they can walk the dogs, they can socialize the cats, but they don't understand. Um, about how volunteers are so critical uh, to the yeah. success and without the volunteers the Berkshire Maine Society really wouldn't exist when we started out it was really organized by a local group of volunteers that started the organization back in 1992 and uh, without them we wouldn't exist today and, and that holds true for for everything we do and um, you know what, what, what's involved in becoming a Berkshire Maine Society volunteer first of all well, to become a volunteer, the first thing would be to fill out one of the applications. People can go to the shelter and pick that form up, or they can print it from our website, www.berkshirehumane.org. They can also reach me through the website. There's a link so they can send me directly an email to me. Um, get the ball rolling. Get the ball get rolling. The ball rolling. What type of, you know, I quickly mentioned, you know, dog walking, cat socializing. What other opportunities are out there? Well, there's a lot. A lot of people like to deal directly with the animals. Did you mention dog walking and working with the cats, the small animals? Those all have a training program, and they also have a weekly commitment. So people will sign up for a specific time slot. Also, people who will run our front desk and reception area. There's a number of people who can't make that commitment who don't have transportation, but they love to help us out. And we have that time have commitment that. because the staff are relying on them. Oh, yes. I mean, we're talking about the front desk and, you know, the phone getting answered from, from when we open at 10 to we close at 4, there's a live person that answers that phone. Yes. And so those commitments you're talking about is because we require and count on them to be there to help out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it makes a huge difference. And as you said, we would not be running as a shelter and could not take care of the animals the way we do mm -hmm. without a lot of volunteer help. We've got over 100 volunteers. In fact, I think it's closer to 150 right now. Mm -hmm. And that is the weekly commitment people. And also we have weekend events. We have some administrative work where I can call people in. We can use bakers now and then. Right. So if we have a bake sale at one of our events, it's helping with our different fundraising opportunities. And we've got some coming up now. Mm -hmm. Warmer weather is coming. Yep, fundraising opportunities. What type of volunteers are you looking for for fundraising opportunities? With fundraising, it's, it's a little different with each one of our events, but a lot of times we will set up at events. It will be a table with merchandise and also there to answer questions. Never have one person alone. We hope it's busy, but we always make sure there's at least a staff or a very knowledgeable volunteer so that no one will feel uncomfortable or feel caught right. in the to spotlight. To do the many booths that we have available throughout, yes. throughout the year. You're right, it's getting warmer, so we'll be, we'll be out, yes, there, will. out there as well. Um, and I know, being from um, the executive director, is that many, we need many people um, to even, they may think of an event, they want to you know, organize and have fun to help raise True. money for the animals. So True. we're looking for co-chairs, for many different events, you know, we have our annual Humane Race, which we'll be talking to Alex in a little while about. And, you know, we have our dog walk, we have our horse show, we mm -hmm. have our big lucky dog raffle, mm -hmm. our annual auction. Yeah. So we're always looking for more people, more ideas to help to help uh, make those successful. Yes. The more money we raise, the more help, well, we can do to, to help the animals True. in our in our community. Um, do you have any involvement? Do we have any involvement with other agencies? Are we do we team up with any other agencies to help bring volunteer activities we to the do. shelter? We do. We've contracted with RSVP, and that's been a, a really huge help, especially with our mailings. That's more of a, not a weekly commitment. Yet there have been some retirees come by. They have some extra time, and they want to help us out. We also have partnered with Elder Services. Right now we have a gentleman through Elder Services that has been doing our facilities work which, which is, is a whole other <laughs> volunteer opportunity it sure is from from doing some landscaping work and after the winter we've had we're going to need some landscaping yeah, this yeah. coming spring to, to yeah. shoveling to to plow whatever yeah. it may need we've got lots of opportunities definitely, there definitely we work closely with the court systems they will send volunteers and that's a huge help especially with the outside maintenance lawn mowing we have recently expanded into more of the schools 
the humane race you just mentioned, we will have a lot of Williams College students that will help with that. In the past, I've had Williams College students act as animal transport. We'll use Greylock Animal Hospital for spay-neuter surgeries. And I've got a few people in Williamstown that have graciously said, I can help you out. I'm already up in the area. I can bring the animal back to the shelter for you. BCC has three programs that we work with. One is their animal care program. They have, the students do a certain number of hours, so that works out really well. There's also their work study program for students that are qualified. And then there's a service learning program. Right. We've had employees come from yes, the BCC program as well. And, yes. and I must say that uh, many of the employees we have today started out as Berkshire Humane Society volunteers. Including myself. Including <laughs> yourself, right? Yes. So um, what about training? Is it, you know, someone may be sitting at home saying, geez, you know, I'd love to go and walk the dogs, but they've got all these, these different apparatus that you put on from, from halties to body harnesses. Yes. I don't know. Is there, is there training involved? There is. We'll start with the dog walkers. They and the kennel cleaners go through a 90-minute certification class. It's conducted by our kennel manager, Lisa Corbett. There is a handbook, but there's also hands-on with one of the shelter dogs, how to approach a dog, how to read some di different body languages. After that certification, they'll also be working alongside a staff member, so they'll do a little bit of shadowing, and little by little, as they build confidence and skill, they get on their own. And I know we touched a little bit on the seasonal opportunities, but we certainly have some of those as well. Do you want to mention those again because they're so important? Right now, unfortunately, we still have some snow. So snow removal, keeping track of, you know, everything safe for our visitors mm -hmm. and our staff members is great. As we do get warmer weather, I'd love to have somebody who has a knowledge of landscaping and some time perennials to help us. We have a couple memorial beds around the shelter that are great, but some of these perennials need to be divided. Some of these shrubs need to be cut back, and I want to make sure that we can keep them healthy. Okay, and I know, um, I, know I mentioned earlier at, at the board level, all our board of directors, which we presently have 14, are all volunteers. Yes. And now uh, from time to time, we're looking for different expertise and different areas to bring to the board as yes. well. So we know that that's, that that's another opportunity to volunteer as well. Any other opportunities we really haven't touched on today? Well, let's see. We touched a little bit on the dog walking. The, there's people who work with the cats. A lot of this is ensuring their health. So we're cleaning the areas. It's not as much socialization. There's a little time for that all after, after all the work gets done. We also have small animals. There are, cat, uh, along with the cats and dogs, we've got bunnies, guinea pigs, ferrets, not quite sure. No right. reptiles. Yep. And, and in regards to the office work as well, you know, we've got we've got volunteers that come in to talk that help us out with the, the website, taking photos. Yes. Photographers always welcome. Yes. Always in need of photographers for the website. Uh, we do filing as well. Mm -hmm. And so uh, yes. there's there's many opportunities. Yes. But the front desk is something when I know when I always give tours of the building, um, the first people to greet them are our front desk people and. Um, they direct people on where, where, they, where yes. to go and answer all their basic questions and they answer the phones and without them we certainly, certainly uh, wouldn't get by. And uh, when I look at the dog walking, you know, we have 25 to 30 dogs at any one time and we have, you know, two or three staff members that have to lock a lot of dogs get out five or six times a day. True. So the quality of care that our pets get directly relate not only to the staff but what the volunteers are able to bring as well. True. So uh, we thank them for that. Um, how can people get in touch with you, Terry, again? Do you want to give them your, your email address? or The email that if they forget this email address, they can go to our website because it is there. You're going to scroll down on the right side and you're going to see about becoming a volunteer. And on the page you get to, there is a download for the form. You can also come by the shelter and pick one up. Okay. My email is first initial, last name. That's how all of us go. So it's T. B I S S A I L L O N at berkshirehumane.org. The phone number is going to be 413 447 7878, and I'm on extension 37. Right, and we want to remind everybody out there we not only have that Pittsfield location, but we also have a new location we opened up last May, Paradise, our feline adoption center in Great Barrington. They're always looking for volunteers as yes. well. Have the same type of opportunities down there as well. Mm -hmm. So, Terry, thank you for coming in today 
and uh, enlightening us on some more opportunities there are to volunteer at the Berkshire Maine Society. And right now we're going to take a break and, and view a few animals, the, the many of the animals that we have available for adoption, and we'll be right back with Alex Cabral, our co-chair of our Humane Race. Mm -hmm. 